LinkedIn publishing is obviously about LinkedIn's own internal engine where they, um, this is LinkedIn, have their own, let's call it um, a magazine for every single person that uses LinkedIn. So you've got your own, I call it magazine, but maybe call it a blog um, that you can publish anything you wish inside LinkedIn. And this is the format and we're going to go and look at it in a bit more detail and I'll explain in detail why it's important that you make use of this. And there's a number of sections there. It's a very simple editor. It's not very complicated, so anybody can master this. But the important thing is that you have a great image that you add at the top of it, which is something that people miss a lot. You have to have a memorable headline. Now, I'm going to jump over into LinkedIn in a second and I'll show you the headlines that I use. And then you can add many more things in the content that you might be writing. So let's jump onto LinkedIn. And to get to this LinkedIn publishing, you literally can start from the home page. So to get to the home page, just click on the LinkedIn button top left and then just click on write an article and it takes you straight to the LinkedIn publishing editor. On here, it gives you the facility to add up a picture. So uh, let me see if I can find a quick picture. It doesn't really matter what it is. Um, OK, let's find one here. It, it really doesn't matter. This is a picture that I, <laughs> I developed the other day for my social media. Now, as you can see, it's not ideal to, to get that picture to fit in to the space that's available. It would be better to make sure that your picture fits in there and then make sure you can then drag it. The middle button tends to be the best place to get your picture to fit. If you do the large one, it crops it automatically and I can't drag it up. Um, so be better. It doesn't matter to have it totally large. If the image is borrowed from somewhere, make sure you add some credit and caption to it or anything you might like. So feel free to put that there. Then in the headline, you type a great headline. OK, so I'm just going to show you on my profile some of the articles that I've written. So I've written 66 articles and there is something specific that I'd like you to notice. I'm just going to scroll down them. How do you know if your content's any good? Is why really the best question to ask yourself? LinkedIn help. Do you really want to treat us like this? Are you sure that you like change? Have you changed your behavior on social yet? Hopefully you've got the message now that every single one is a question. And this is something that I learned from watching people who are journalists and proper authors, which I'm not, um, that a question draws you in. A question means you want to answer it, right? So people tend to want to click through to the article and then engage with it in some way because at least then there is a possibility that if you've asked them a question the chances are that they will you know want to answer it and therefore it gives you the ability to then get hopefully some interaction going and that's at the end of the day what we're trying to do so here there's not much activity going on with this article and that's because I haven't promoted it as much as I should be for, for now, which obviously with the holidays that have happened recently um, means that not many people have interacted with it. Now, um, as you can see, there is a headline and the text in there is not too onerous. I've got some other images that have come into it as well. And, you know, it's only about 
maximum 500 words in this article. So I would highly recommend that you write an article of about 500 words. Make sure that if you want to highlight anything, you bold it. If there is something that you specifically want to highlight, maybe put it in italics and there's other ways that you can highlight it in there. But it's very simple to do. So if I just go to the new draft that I created here and let's call this which one is the who is the next grumpy. Right. And then there is this little box here with a plus sign on it. If I click on that, it allows me to add another image, a video, slides, which is probably from SlideShare, links, uh, which I can just copy and paste there. So you need to just explore what it is that you'd like to have there. And yeah, this is just a link from SlideShare, Prezi and more. So you just need to paste and uh, copy and paste the, the link in there or you just start typing. Um, my advice would be type your text somewhere else. Um, either in a Word document or in a text editor, in a note section, somewhere else where it can be saved because you never know that once you type something here, for whatever reason, if you lose the internet connection or something else happens, that you're not able to save the text in some way. So I could say, I thought it would be a good idea if I could spell, that would help to compare and get your opinion on who, which one is the best grumpy. OK, I'm just putting something down so I can show you what you can then do with the text. So you just highlight this and you go to the top and you bold it or you go here and make it italic or you go here and you underline it and that's it it's simple as that everybody's familiar now with editors you can also put it into quote so if it becomes a quote it kind of pushes it into the middle um, and of course what you could do as well is highlight this and then identify a link and then I could just do HTTP colon and then staying alive uk.com slash store. Right. And I can click apply. And now this is highlighted so people can click through on it. It's automatically saved. Uh, it will be under my drafts or I can then publish it. If I publish it, it will give me the opportunity to share it with my network and immediately it I can either allow comments or not allow comments but of course you do always want to allow comments because the whole purpose is you want to share this with your network and get some sort of engagement also it's telling you and we're going to cover this in a minute it's telling you to use hashtags because LinkedIn are now using hashtags to allow you to, um, you know, locate some of your content together as well, which we're going to cover in a minute. So and then obviously, hello or thought this was a fun thing to do, whatever, whatever it is. And I can, you know, put a whole load of hashtags in there um and and just get people to engage with it and this will then be published to people's timelines and they will engage with it but that's not where you know you've got to finish with it because it then is your job then to continue sharing it on a regular basis so for example if we go to my previous article here that I, I published on the 30th of May, it allows me to, you know, continue sharing it. So I can click on my own articles. I can click 
the link to, yeah so this is the this is the pop-up window that has appeared um, when I click the share button on my own article so now I can share it to my network and at the same time to Twitter which of course it has to use only 140 characters so you know um, how do you know if your content is any good have you evaluated your content recently question mark again I'm, I'm posting it I'm sharing it with a question mark to get people to engage with it um, it's our job to make sure we share content that is of interest to our audience okay so I've slightly gone over um, but doesn't matter just for this kind of test and then you can also post it to groups if you want to do that but I don't recommend it because I prefer you start having conversations in groups you can send it to individuals so you could you know I can send it to my let's send it to my wife um, because I'm just doing this test and then put your own um, message in there so they'll get a notification inside of their LinkedIn or via email etc and just click the share button and that's now gone so that's allowed me to share some of my own content again on a regular basis and of course if you have any scheduler like Buffer or Hootsuite or anything like that that you might be using then you can schedule these updates as well in there so they go out at certain different times so let me just share change screens again so right so that's the share button there what you can also do is grab some text inside your article um, so let me see if I can how do you know whether you're targeting the right audience so you can highlight this text and you can see here the little share button comes up so I had to type something but the trick here is to keep sharing your content on a regular basis the articles that you've written and then share it with a different soundbite so I can do that again I can share it to LinkedIn or Twitter but of course if I share it to LinkedIn I can automatically send it to Twitter as well right so there it's come up the pop-ups come up again and I can then send that out and it's already put the quote in there now here is the trick if you want to do something to help other people if you can do this on your articles you can also do this on other people's articles so I'm going to look for a good friend of mine who's always really great at writing articles and she wrote a super article the other day so if I go to her article which is this one here the LinkedIn headline mobile hack you are going to love right this may be the shortest blog post ever right your headline is vital to expressing your value proposition to LinkedIn audience based on the new LinkedIn interface it only allows for 120 characters um, if you update your headline on the mobile app your characters are practically endless so if I highlight that and I now share that to LinkedIn and you can see now what it's done automatically it's put that text in from the article it's sharing the article it will share it to Twitter and it's quoted the author automatically now that author will be tagged on LinkedIn she'll get a notification and it will also be tagged on Twitter so if they have a Twitter handle inside their LinkedIn profile it will pick that up 
and it will tag them on Twitter as well. So they'll get two notifications. So you're doing this person a huge favor by sharing their article and equally those people could do the same for you. So you just have to go to people's articles and do that little bit. It's particularly useful when we go on to the next bit that I'm going to share with you, which is um, content hunt, uh, connection hunting, I should say. Right. So let's um, go back to this article. So basically what I'm saying is once you've written the article, once you've published it, you need to go back and regularly update it. Now, one thing is an absolute no, no, and that is adverts, right? I can't show you any and it wouldn't be right for me to actually share any with you and embarrass somebody. But what I have seen on LinkedIn that people do quite a bit of advertising inside LinkedIn as well. The, the, let me just see if I can find one. You can search for articles as well in LinkedIn. So if you just type in, let's say real estate, because these are generally the ones that are the offenders. And if I click on posts, let's see if there are any articles on real estate where people are sharing. These look OK, so I'm maybe not going to find one. These these articles look not too bad. Um, there's some. No. OK, here's my new blog. Check it out. OK, reason you should sell this summer. No. OK, well, that's interesting. What happened there? Um, because that wasn't an article. Apologies. <laughs> that was just a blog post. I'm looking for LinkedIn articles. and There aren't actually any that have come up. So not to worry, I'm not going to be able to find one to share with you um, in terms of a an article as such. But you can look for anything looking for articles inside LinkedIn that you might like to engage with or share, um, etc. So that covers pretty much the the way to write articles inside LinkedIn to publish them, to then share them to your network and do the same for other people.